Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, happy GIS week and happy GIS day in advance. Uh, I know we're celebrating a day early, but that's okay. Uh, we can't have enough of GIS celebrations uh, during this week. Uh, I hope that uh, any event uh, or workshop that you have been attending this week has been fruitful and productive. Uh, thanks to uh, everyone who has joined us. Um, please feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat. Let us know where you're joining us from um, and uh, why you're so excited about uh, GIS Day. Uh, my name is Maryam Rabi. I'm with the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. I'm the head of SDGs today. Uh, and we have the pleasure and honor of being a member of the EO Toolkit for SDG 11, uh, which is uh, one of the work streams led by the EO for SDG uh, initiative. Uh, today, uh, we are going to hear from uh, my colleagues from the GEO Secretariat, from UN Habitat, uh, from ESRI, and from the European Commission Joint Research Center. Uh, we have a very exciting training scheduled on uh, Earth observation for SDG 11, um, calculating the degree of urbanization. Uh, so before we jump uh, into the training session, uh, we're going to hear from our colleagues um, at the UN Habitat headquarters in Nairobi. Uh, I know that they have had um, a series of workshops and meetings uh, related to this topic and methodology, so we're going to hear from them. Uh, then we're going to hand it over to uh, my colleague uh, Martin from the Geo Secretariat to tell us a little bit about uh, EO for SDG and the toolkit. Uh, then we'll hand it over to uh, my colleagues uh, Kira from Esri and Pietro from the European uh, Commission Joint Research Center uh, for the training. Uh, and please do stay with us until the end of the training because at the end of the session, I'm going to let you know um, how you can get your hands on a free ArcGIS license um, uh, to use uh, so that you can uh, then um, go through the training and the, the learn path uh, over the next year. So five of our, of our participants uh, in honor of GIS Day will receive uh, a free ArcGIS license. So stay tuned and I'll let you know how you can um, uh, uh, win one of those licenses. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Dennis and Michele, uh, who are in Nairobi. Um, over to you. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Mario. Hello, everyone. Uh, Dennis from Nairobi. Michele, come say hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Michele. <laughs> we, are, we are here with a big team of uh, about 30 people, 30 something people from different countries uh, who are working with us this week to share experiences from the implementation of the degree urbanization that we've been supporting the last uh, three years across uh, 13 countries. Uh, and of course, uh, this relates to the global need for harmonized city definition, a journey that we started in 2016 at the uh, Habitat uh, Conference in Ecuador. And we've been working with the multiple partners, of course, including the European Commission to support the adoption of a globally harmonized method that can help us to measure urban trends and rural trends in a more consistent and uh, harmonized manner. So we're really excited that uh, activities we've implemented through the years, uh, which started with global consultations in 2018, 2019, with about 85 countries on the feasibility of having a globally harmonized method to define cities and urban areas, which then led to the adoption of degree urbanization by the UN Statistical Commission for global adoption and application for measurement of the SDGs. Uh, it's, it's really a journey that has been quite interesting and we've engaged with different countries and seeing how this uh, degree urbanization manifests and shapes at the local context. Uh, so uh, the adoption of the method in 2020 uh, came also with a request to us, as uh, UN Habitat, uh, the European Commission, World Bank, uh, ILO, OECD, and FAO, who are the sub promoters of this uh, concept uh, of harmonization to support countries to actually be able to implement the method using their data. So from this is where we started another process uh, of supporting countries directly to uh, implement uh, the degree urbanization using their own data 
and uh, national processes that build on uh, <clears throat> enhancing collaboration and partnerships uh, between national statistical systems, but also other relevant agencies uh, at the national level. So uh, the first phase we've supported 13 countries, which are with us here today. I'll pass the uh, screen uh, over around for to, so that you see who is here. Uh, 13 countries, here yeah, we have Kenya, we have, uh, okay, let me see how this goes. We have Kenya, we have Egypt, we have uh, Philippines, we have uh, Tunisia, we have Ecuador, we have uh, Chile, we have, we have uh, Kazakhstan, we have uh, Indonesia, we, we have Peru, we have uh, Nepal, we have Mexico, and, uh, and Azerbaijan. Did I skip anyone? <laughs> okay, so we have we have two representatives coming from each country, majorly from uh, the statistical system, but also the ministries that are responsible for human development. And uh, we've been really having very interesting uh, last two years to uh, work with them and also multiple, many other multiple partners at the national level to apply this method. Uh, so this week we are really having these countries share their experiences on what has been the outcome of applying degree urbanization as the recommended global standard for measuring urban and rural uh, trends, but also the intersections uh, between uh, these uh, different uh, uh, urban uh, rural continuum uh, manifestations. So we are happy that uh, we've had a very successful uh, three years with countries and we're looking forward to continuing this because we are just rolling out another phase of support to another 40 countries in partnership with UNICEF and UNFPF. And we really look forward to hopefully looking uh, or rather seeing the application of the degree urbanization based on the, the training we're going to have today. And thanks a lot to S3 for, of course, uh, supporting this uh, uh, lesson learn on the uh, application of degree urbanization uh, use, uh, for ArcGIS Pro. And some of the countries I know have been asking us uh, if this is available. And I'm happy also European Commission has uh, really made it possible to have these tools uh, available so for at least for, for all the countries. So, Mariam, if you allow me, I will quickly show you who is in the room. And uh, we will stop our intervention and get back to our uh, session for the day. Sure, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I hope you are visible. Uh, I'm... What are you saying? Yeah, I, I'm not visible. My hand is visible. Okay. <laughs> now I'm visible. Hi, this is Amr from Egypt. You and I, we got Egypt. Hey, Bab from Egypt. Jambo, Helen. Helen from Kenya. Selim, Ulfa from Tunisia. Selim, Samira from Tunisia. Oh, okay. Hello, from Philippines. <laughs> Hi, Carlo from Philippines. Uh, this way. Silvia Angulo de Peru. David Ramirez, Peru. Hola, Paola y Rodrigo de Chile. Gracias. Hey, George, you're not with us. Hi, you're not with us. Hi, Jasper, you're not with Kenya. Okay. Hi, Marlon, Ecuador. Salem from Kazakhstan. Well, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, from Indonesia. Misa, I love you. Hello, Charles from Malawi. <laughs> Hello, Kingsley from Malawi. <laughs> I'm here. Hi, Nepal from Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're having their coffee. <laughs> Hi, from Azerbaijan. Hello, from Azerbaijan. Here. Yeah. Hola. Saludos. <laughs> Hello from Mexico. <laughs> okay, last two. Uh, 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 hello again from Egypt, Hassan. Hola, saludos, Francisco Moreno de Mexico. Okay, Maria, uh, that's it from us. Uh, thanks uh, for allowing us to say hi and truly really wish all the best in the session today and look forward to also seeing the results from the global application by the different uh, people will be part of the training. Thanks Great. Again. Thank you so much, Dennis. It was so lovely to see everyone in the room. Thanks for joining. And we look forward to learning about all the great work that you're doing and leading in your countries. Uh, great. So without further ado, I am going to hand it over to my colleague, Martin Clark from the Geo Secretariat to tell us a little bit about the EO for SDG initiative and the EO toolkit for SDG 11. Over to you, Martin. 
Thanks, Miriam. And afternoon or good morning, everybody. Um, I'm just going to share my screen if I can. There we go. Yeah, thanks for um, for the opportunity to speak. I won't waste um, any precious time because I'm sure you're all eager to get on with the training itself. Um, but just to give you a bit of context, a bit of background to kind of where the EO for SDG um, initiative came from or is framed by and, and specifically what the EO for SDG Human Settlements Toolkit is all about. So I am the Urban Resilience Coordinator at the Group on Earth Observations. I'm based here in um, Geneva with the rest of the, the GEO Secretariat team. GEO, for those that um, weren't familiar, is an intergovernmental partnership with around um, 115, 120 national governments and then 160 plus other organization, private sector organizations, civil society, NGOs, et cetera all working together to try and promote the use, uptake, application of Earth observations as a public good. So that really means ensuring that Earth observations data, information and insight is, is open, equitably or publicly accessible um, and is being put to use to address some of society's greatest challenges. I think that is best framed by the, um, the Sustainable Development Goals, which you find referenced or reflected throughout a lot of the work that EOTH uh, GEO does, um, but also some of these other major global policy initiatives like the Paris Agreement, New Urban Agenda, um, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. Um, GEO is largely funded through in-kind contributions from its members, from the participating organizations I mentioned, and we have a, a work program which is around um, is around forty activities in that work program, which covers all sorts of engagement priorities. Um, I mentioned climate change, urbanisation, SDGs. If SDG is just one of those activities, um, um, and it's a very um, central one, and we find that it's not only it's focused on. The SDGs, but it works across all of the other activities on our work programs, um, as well as engaging with organizations external to GEO. So at the moment, I mean, it was established in 2016. Um, it's currently co chaired by both NASA and uh, JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. And um, the general purpose of this, of this initiative really is to organize and realize the potential of Earth observations and geospatial information uh, to advance the 2030 agenda. And so we're at the midpoint now, um, and it's still of, of, of major relevance. There are three goals, really, that, or you know, aims that the initiative seeks to, to achieve, and that's really in the demonstration of how EO Earth observations can actually contribute to monitoring and implementation of the SDGs, um, increase skills and capabilities of those um, wanting to or using Earth observations to further SDG activities and achievements, and then to raise awareness of, of um, I guess, the importance and the use of Earth observations uh, in support of the SDGs themselves. We've got um, a board that's been established with 100 plus affiliates um, and a variety of um, organizations that kind of support the implementation of this project. There are sort of four SDGs that we currently cover, um, six on clean water, 11 on sustainable cities, 14 on life below water and 15 on life uh, on land. And there's around 24 individual indicators that we can use Earth observations to measure and monitor. Um, that's not to say that there aren't other targets and indicators throughout the SDGs that we can um, contribute to, but these are the ones with the, the greatest opportunities, at least in, in the first instance. The one that we're going to hear about today, um, and the focus of one of our sort of offshoots, if you like, um, the EO Toolkit for Sustainable Cities and Human Settlements, there's about seven indicators in, in that SDG that, that um, Earth observations can, can be very useful for. Um, and I suppose I'll just talk a little bit about what we actually do. So it's all about sort of developing and promoting standards like the degree of urbanization that Dennis referred to before, um, getting the use of those standards written up and 
detailed in policy briefings and other publications, running events like we've got today, capacity building trainings and awareness raising uh, activities, as well as um, showcasing some of the interesting applications, uses of the projects themselves um, through an annual awards program, which in fact, we just um, concluded last week in, in Cape Town, um, where I know some of you are present. Um, as you can see, there's a wide range of organizations that contribute in some way um, to that activity. And I would urge you to, um, for those of you with the kind of urban leaning focus, I would urge you to have a look at our toolkit um, on sustainable cities and human settlements. There's lots of resources in there, uh, links to data, descriptions of tools and methodologies, as well as uh, a number of use cases detailed that, that demonstrate how these um, yeah, tools and methods have been put to use in, 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 in real life and some of the impact that we've, we've realized from that. Anyway, I will, um, I'll cut it short there. Um, do feel free to reach out if you've got any questions on the toolkit on Geo more generally. And I think I'll share, we'll share some email addresses afterwards, but I'll hand back to you now, Marion. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, um, Martin. Um, we're having some technical issues with one of our speakers. So if you give us a moment, uh, we're going to have uh, my colleague, um, Kira Morish from Esri join us for the next uh, segment of the uh, webinar. So please just give us one moment. Yes, uh, in the meantime, maybe I can comment uh, and thank uh, the connection uh, from Nairobi event. Uh, I think it's really nice to see how uh, this is becoming a global endeavor and how uh, countries are committed to uh, the implementation uh, of the degree of urbanization worldwide. I think it's uh, really amazing uh, the way we've gone through and uh, how people are now able to disaggregate uh, uh, statistics by degree of urbanization, especially with regards to sustainable development goals. I think this is a very uh, powerful tool and uh, also a success story uh, for people who work in GIS. Uh, and um, also you show the, <clears throat> we, we've seen the power of capacity building uh, exercises stated by uh, the partners in, uh, in the degree of urbanization implementation, you and Habit at the European Commission. I think there's really space for everyone uh, to get to learn uh, how uh, to uh, produce statistics uh, by urban and rural areas. So I, it's again, uh, I think this one an occasion to show that uh, really everyone can uh, with some free data and tools uh, uh, calculate uh, a bit uh, of uh, the progress towards sustainable development goals. Thank you so much, um, Pietro. Um, maybe, uh, Richard, if you could uh, make Kira a speaker, uh, that would be great. I think she has joined as an attendee. That way she can enable her mic and camera. Um, unfortunately, okay. I cannot see her in the attendees list. Okay. Um, so maybe what we'll do is, uh, Pietro, uh, we can start with a training session, um, and then once we're able to get Kira online, uh, we can have her present um, a little bit more about the, uh, the learn lesson. So uh, once again, thank you, Martin, for the introduction, uh, and uh, Pietro, over to you uh, for the training. Yes, thank you. Okay, then I will start to share my screen uh, here. And uh, take you uh, through this journey uh, in uh, the degree of urbanization application on uh, Esri tools. So uh, we thank again uh, our uh, colleagues at Esri uh, for uh, producing uh, this nice learn lesson. If you are not uh, on this page, uh, then I advise you uh, to uh, to find it on Google. You can also. Uh, Google it uh, easily and find it uh, by searching uh, ESRI training uh, degree of urbanization. Or if you click on this link, you will land on this page uh, where there is this nice step-by-step uh, -step, uh, 
procedure on how uh, to apply the degree of urbanization to your own data anywhere in the world. Uh, to uh, run uh, this training that I'm going to demonstrate today, you need ArcGIS Pro. Um, and then uh, you see I have it here on my screen. Then you also need uh, the Global Human Settlement, uh, the Gurba Toolkit, which is a bunch of uh, software tools uh, we have produced uh, at uh, the European Commission uh, explicit, explicitly for uh, the production of the degree of urbanization. You can have it by clicking here on the proposed link. Then if you scroll down a little bit, you find this uh, section here uh, with the degree of urbanization. Then uh, you can download uh, an ArcGIS version online. It is the online and offline version, but uh, the online one is uh, is fine. It, it just needs to connect uh, briefly to the internet uh, to check uh, uh, that your uh, system requirements are satisfied and download uh, a bit of uh, the backbone code. Otherwise, you can also download an offline version, put it on a, on a USB stick and uh, use it later. Uh, the standalone version is uh, a an, an standalone interface that does not work uh, with ArcGIS. It is uh, then an independent interface that you can run uh, uh, without having uh, the need uh, for ArcGIS installed. But today I'm going to demonstrate uh, the ArcGIS version. So I'm going to download this one. I have uh, downloaded it uh, already, of course, uh, to save you some time. Uh, the other thing uh, we need uh, uh, to run this training uh, is uh, to download uh, the package, of course, the data set package uh, that is uh, here at uh, step number one. So I'm going to click here and uh, save it somewhere. Let's say here, I have saved uh, it already, but I'm going to overwrite it. It's a light file, so it's only 1.9 megabytes. Then I will navigate to uh, the folder in which I have uh, saved uh, my file and double click it. This will uh, open uh, ArcGIS. Uh, I am under a proxy server. So I need to enter a password to access the internet. This is my company policy, sorry for this. But it's going to happen only once. Okay, here is the main interface uh, of ArcGIS that many of you uh, should know already. And here you see the content of the data set. Uh, today we're working on a case study in New Caledonia, uh, which is a, a far away country for me because it's on the other side of the planet in Oceania. And uh, the data set contains uh, what uh, could be uh, called uh, a census map. And uh, this is how it looks like. It uh, contains the, the polygons of uh, the administrative areas or the enumeration areas counting uh, uh, the population. I can also rename this map as a census. This will help maybe because later we are going to produce more maps. Okay, let's call this census. And uh, we can uh, see the attribute table, of course, uh, to check what's inside. You see there is uh, a bunch of polygons and each has a name and a population attributes uh, and then a province uh, of, um, uh, of appartenance. So here um, we are going to use the population attribute uh, to first produce a population grid and then uh, classify each of this polygon by degree of urbanization. This is the ultimate uh, goal of this training. Um, then we can use this uh, classification uh, to uh, produce and uh, break down statistics in each of these polygons by uh, its class uh, in the degree of urbanization. 
So let's say um, we can uh, first uh, label our features maybe. So we see their name appearing and uh, uh, maybe we can also change uh, the symbology here to something a bit nicer in order to see uh, um, the population growth, uh, the population distribution uh, across the different uh, districts here. And uh, with this color scale, we see immediately how, uh, where's the capital city, which is Noumea here and uh, the, the surrounding uh, areas that are also quite uh, populated here. We could also, of course, normalize this by the area, but we are not uh, doing it uh, now for brevity. So this is the first thing uh, that the data set contains. Then, then you see there's another data set, uh, which is called GHS built. Um, this one is uh, actually the um, built up surface uh, identified uh, on satellite imagery for this area. It's a raster data set, uh, so it contains uh, um, the beta squares of uh, built up surface in each pixel encoded uh, as meter squares. So it goes uh, from zero to uh, 10,000 because it is actually at the 100 meter resolution, we can check this in uh, the uh, raster information uh, uh, properties. And you see that it's 100 meters. We can also uh, symbolize it better. Maybe we can mask uh, zero values and zoom in a bit uh, to see how it looks like. Maybe I can also use another color scale that is maybe clear. Okay, this one. So we see again how the, the area of the capital city contains uh, the highest uh, land surface occupied uh, by built up. Uh, we are going to use uh, this built up surface to uh, spatially disaggregate uh, the population that we've seen in the census. So we're going to distribute uh, the population that is lying in each of these polygons uh, based uh, on where the buildings are. Uh, we use this uh, proxy variable of uh, built up as a disaggregation uh, variable. Okay, we can uh, uh, keep the census uh, here um, shown. Um, the good thing uh, that I also wanted to mention is that uh, in this training, uh, the, the, the GHS built layer is preloaded. But if you go uh, to our website, uh, the GHS uh, uh, Global Human Settlement Layer website, which is at this link, we've seen it before uh, to download uh, the tools. We can also download the data. So if you're interested in another area of the world, you can uh, click here on data and tools, download the data, and you will be uh, sent to this page. Uh, you see there is a tiled uh, globe. So you can see, you can download from here the built up area you're interested in. Here we are in New Caledonia, it's this area here. Uh, we are going to use uh, the built up surface. Uh, so the again, the meter square of buildings uh, encoded at pixel level, but we, uh, we may also download the volume information because recently uh, my team, the Global Human Settlement Layer team has produced a global volume uh, uh, information layer, which contains the uh, cubic meters of, uh, um, built up volume. It is made by extruding the surface uh, times uh, the height. So from here, you can as well download uh, the volume information. And uh, bear in mind, this is a multi-temporal information layer. So you can download uh, uh, the data set for any of the time uh, slots proposed. Okay, let's go back here uh, at the um, um, at our uh, um, a New Caledonian case uh, study. And now uh, we need uh, to uh, import uh, the 
library uh, with the tools that I downloaded previously. So I need to go here in the catalog and on toolboxes and click on add toolbox. Then um, I have, um, I am sent here automatically to the uh, directory where I have downloaded the tools, uh, but you may need to navigate uh, to the folder where you downloaded it. Um, there is uh, details uh, about uh, this operation in the website of the training uh, on Esri web page. So when, when I import uh, this toolbox, I have a list of tools. And uh, as I said before, uh, what I want to do here first is uh, uh, the disaggregation of population on a population grid. Uh, let's create uh, first an output folder. I'm going to create it here in this, uh, let's say, home directory that I have dedicated to this scope. I will call this output. Okay. And then I will open my GHS population to grid tool. This is the tool dedicated to the special disaggregation of population from census to built up. And uh, I uh, am uh, sent to this interface. First thing I need to do is to uh, select an output workspace. I'm going to, uh, uh, um, I'm going to add a new uh, connected folder here. Maybe I'm just navigating to uh, the actual place where I've saved, uh, where I've created my output folder. Just give me a moment, I need to find it here on this PC, X, GIS week and output folder. I'm going also to add it here in the connected folder because it's going to, it's going to be useful also later. So here it is, GIS week. Okay, let's go back uh, to uh, the population to grid interface. Here uh, I am asked uh, to enter um, an output projection. By default, it would be this world more wide, which is an equal area global projection. Uh, because we are doing, we are dealing with uh, population distributions and uh, possibly computing population densities. So it is needed that the, um, uh, the projection is uh, is an equal area one. Then here I need to uh, load uh, my uh, population polygons layer. It's there are those ones, so I'm just going to drag them here. And uh, from uh, the attribute table of this uh, population census, I need to select the population attributes that we saw before being uh, this population 2019. The other fields are to optimize the computation. This one is a stepwise uh, field uh, that is used to optimize uh, the computation. Or we have the option to load uh, a point uh, layer in case your census is not structured uh, in uh, polygons, but in point features. Uh, I don't have uh, this uh, case here. So I just need uh, now to load the built up raster, which is this one, remember again. And I'm dragging it here. So this one is going to be used uh, for the disaggregation of population. Then uh, I'm going to run the tool. It's going to take a moment. In the meantime, I can create a new map that I'm preparing uh, to uh, visualize the results. I'm going to name this one as uh, population grid and then I'm going to dock it here. Good. Then this one is pointing to Italy, which is the place I'm connecting from, but of course I want to link it with the 
the New Caledonian case study. So I'm going to click on link views with center and scale. And it's going to show me New Caledonia. However, the projection is different because uh, by default, the projection used is not this equal area I was mentioning before, but uh, um, the standard uh, global Mercator projection. So I'm going to go here, click on the properties, and then in the coordinate system, uh, select the mole wide one. If you don't have it in the in the favorites, uh, you can simply search 54009, which is the PSG code uh, for uh, uh, word mole wide, and it will appear here. I'm going to click OK, and you see that the present uh, the uh, projection now matches. Uh, good, and I see also that there is the population to grid uh, completed. So I'm going to open the output folder. It is here, output folder. And you see that there is a file in here. It's our raster file as expected because we have a population grid. I'm going to create the pyramids to ease uh, the visualization. And I'm going to act a bit on symbology. Uh, for example, I'm going to set uh, like this a color scale, for example. I'm going to visualize it as a minimum, maximum, uh, and edit uh, the min max values uh, ranging from zero to, let's say, 1500, which is usually a good value at one kilometer resolution. And then I'm going to mask the zero values. Good. So this is uh, how uh, my population grid uh, looks like. And uh, we can zoom in to the area of the capital. And we see how um, uh, population has now been uh, allocated uh, to the capital which, uh, with much uh, higher precision compared to the census. Here, we barely see uh, any difference uh, in terms of uh, population distribution between these uh, three uh, departments here, like Paita, Dumbea, and Montore, or Numea. And then we actually see that on the population grid, most of the population is actually lying in, in, in the capital, is actually living here in the capital. Uh, so uh, we can even click uh, on uh, um, pixel and visualize the number of inhabitants that has been uh, distributed here, here based on uh, the built up surface. So we've used uh, the simple meter square of buildings uh, of built up area in, in, in this region uh, to distribute the population that uh, appears as an attribute in the population census. Good, now uh, we, can, uh, we can pass now at the second tool. And uh, to do so, I'm going to open the degree of urbanization grid tool. Double click here. Um, and uh, this one is uh, intended to create uh, another grid which holds a categorical value standing uh, for the degree of urbanization classes. Uh, this uh, requires uh, an output workspace as well. I can select uh, the output folder just uh, as before and a population raster which is the one I produced at the preview step. So I'm going to go here and select my population grid at the thousand meter resolution. Uh, I'm going to use the reduce uh, urban center fragmentation, which uh, uses again, uh, the built up raster uh, to um, uh, actually avoid having uh, urban centers uh, scattered in many fragments and pieces around my map. So 
with this option, uh, I'm going to have a more rather more compact uh, urban centers. I'm going to load the built-up raster here and uh, leave the rest of the options as default. I'm running the tool now. And in the meantime, just as before, I'm creating a new map. It's appearing here. I'm going to dock it at the bottom of my screen. Actually, it's better here. Yes. In this corner here. I'm going to name this one. Uh, I'm going to change the the, pop the projection of this map as well to world wide. And I'm going to rename it also as degree of urbanization, urbanization grid. Click OK. And then uh, the output uh, files have been produced. So I will navigate to the output folder. And I see there are plenty of things. Um, all these are, let's say, the features, uh, the feature files in shape file format corresponding to the different classes. But there is also a raster file with the classes in uh, categorical uh, values. I'm going to open this one, the level two classification of the degree of urbanization. ArcGIS asks me to calculate statistics and pyramids. I'm going to say yes. And this is my map. Um, so, the colors that you see here correspond uh, to different urbanization categories. I'm going uh, to list them all uh, by changing uh, the label here in uh, uh, the symbology. So 10 uh, is the value that corresponds to water. Then 11 stands for very low density rural grid cells 12 stands for low density rural grid cells then 13 is for rural clusters so a bit denser like uh, villages and then 21 is for suburban and very urban air, uh, grid cells And then we have 22, which is for semi-dense urban clusters. 23, which is for dense urban clusters. And 30, which is for urban centers. Good, with this legend, we can uh, zoom again at around the area of the capital city and see how the capital city is an actual urban center. So it's a city as expected. It is surrounded by a bit of uh, suburban and peri-urban areas. There are also some villages or rural clusters. There is also a semi-dense urban cluster here, a dense one here. It seems uh, pretty nice. And then the rest is more or less uh, rural with some villages or rural clusters uh, here and there. Uh, you can check on our methodology, the thresholds of population size and density used uh, to produce this classification, but I'm not uh, touching it right now because I want this uh, session to be very practical. Okay, now uh, the last step I want to perform uh, is uh, the creation uh, of uh, the classified territorial units. So I want this uh, starting uh, map here with the census units to be colored uh, according to the degree of urbanization categories. So I want to assign to each of these units 
a degree of urbanization class. Uh, in order to do that, I open the degree of urbanization territorial units classifier. Again, I will have to click on an output folder and uh, yeah, I select the usual one. I will need to load the territorial units uh, uh, from the uh, starting census uh, in shape file. And uh, uh, then uh, I, I can set up uh, this stepwise field uh, to optimize the computation and uh, group uh, uh, units uh, together uh, by province or by district. Uh, uh, and then uh, the, the, the tool will iterate over each uh, group of features. But I don't need this because uh, it's a small file and with a relatively small area. So I'm going to leave that one blank. I just need to select the population attribute here, uh, which is this one. Then there's the option to uh, uh, input a cross tabulation field in case I already have my national urban and rural classification for each administrative area, then the tool will produce uh, a comparison uh, between uh, urban and rural uh, classification according to the national definition and the degree of urbanization definition. I don't have this uh, field in my uh, census attribute table, so I will leave this one blank as well. I just need to load uh, the population raster uh, from uh, the output uh, produced the before. So I'm going to go to the output and select the POP2G output, so the population grid at 1,000 meters, and the degree of urbanization raster, so this one. I'm going also to select this one. Level one or level two uh, is, uh, is the same. If you select level one, you will only produce level one. Now, if you select level two, you will produce level two and level one. Level two contains more classes. Uh, it, they're the one I listed here. Level one contains fewer classes. Let's select level two and run the tool. In the meantime, I'm also creating a new map here as usual. I'm putting it here and then uh, here. I'm going to the properties. Rename it as classified territorial units, units, and change the coordinate system to world more wide. Okay, here it is. And now, in a moment, we will see the results. So I think it's also nice and convenient, this uh, feature of Arc uh, GIS Pro, which I love personally to have uh, multiple uh, maps uh, synchronized. And uh, in this way, it's easy to visualize uh, data sets uh, that needs to be compared, that need to be compared. Um, yeah, so now the tool completed. It's going to be called uh, just like the input shape file, which is NC2019 population. I'm going to find it here. NC2019 population plus, uh, the, and, then, and then there is a suffix uh, which stands for the tool. So GHS, DU, TUC, Territorial Units Classifier. Here's the shape file. I can drag it here to my map. I have this um, um, monocolor map. So I need to import a symbology for this one. And to do so, I go to the symbology tab, then click on import symbology. And the symbology layer is going to be here in the output folder. 
so uh, you have uh, multiple options. You can either visualize level one or level two. I suggest you visualize level two because it's the one uh, we've been visualizing in the grid. So let's select level two and then uh, run. And here it is. So what you have here, I'm enlarging the legend here. Uh, what you have here is a classified census with uh, territorial units uh, assigned uh, with a class uh, from uh, the degree of urbanization level two. Let's zoom into the area of the capital city. So you see here that uh, this um, um, area of the capital city is classified as uh, um, city. And then uh, this area here, it's uh, slightly dense because the suburban area is a dense town and also a semi-dense town. So in the end, it inherits a class uh, which is a dense town. Um, this um, class is attributed by majority of population. So based on where the majority of population lives uh, across uh, these uh, cells in the rural, uh, in, in the, uh, the degree of urbanization grid. And here, uh, this one is classified as a village because the majority of population in this polygon lives here in the cells uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, rural clusters. So here it's how it looks like. Uh, there's uh, the rest of uh, the island is classified pretty much as rural. There is only this uh, district here which has, uh, you see, uh, quite uh, some population concentration. It is classified as uh, rural clusters uh, in, in the degree of urbanization grid. And then uh, it, it inherits uh, uh, the village uh, categorization under the territorial, uh, the classified territorial level. Good. So I think uh, uh, this is it uh, for this training. Remember, you can uh, look at it uh, again, uh, step by step uh, on this uh, website. If you want, uh, you can also access a thought of um, version of uh, the training uh, uh, at this link that I'm going to show now. It's the EU academy um, degree of urbanization. This one is a free and open course, which contains all the information you need to uh, um, run the tools. Uh, this one is for standalone version of the tools. Uh, so it, it it's not the one in ArcGIS, but um, uh, it contains also a lot of uh, theory and background information. So if you go to this uh, link and then enroll, you can access all the different uh, modules. If you're interested uh, in knowing uh, more about uh, the methodology of the degree of urbanization, you can also Google Eurostat degree of urbanization manual and you are going to be directed here uh, to this uh, methodological manual to define cities, towns, and rural areas for international comparisons. There is a version in English, one in French, and one in Spanish you can download. So once uh, you have produced uh, this output, it's very easy to disaggregate statistics of your sustainable development goals indicators uh, by urban and rural categories, and then it's much uh, nicer to produce insights uh, uh, for your uh, key partners uh, like uh, UN Habitat or uh, even to de disseminate the results uh, to the public. Um, uh, remember, this definition is uh, intended for international comparisons, so it might differ a bit from what you expect at national level but it's common to everyone in the world. Uh, so that's why it's great 
because everyone can produce uh, the same statistics uh, with a common uh, definition. Thank you so but much, Pietro. I have uh, I've uh, come to an end, so I thank you and uh, let you intervene if there's a Kira or someone again. Yeah, so thanks again so much um, for that training session. Uh, and thank you, um, Thomas uh, from the GR uh, JRC for also responding to the questions and sharing the links in the chat. Um, we'll share our email at the end for anyone who would like to um, ask more questions. We'll direct it to each of the, uh, the different speakers. Uh, but for now, we'll hand it over to Kira Morish from Esri to tell us a little bit about uh, the learn path uh, before we uh, conclude the session. Kira, over to you. Thank you. Um, Pietro, thank you so much for presenting that lesson as well. So the lesson that Pietro walked through is really from the European Commission. They've done all the hard work and we have translated it into um, the, the Esri software. So if you're using ArcGIS Pro, this is a great platform for you to be able to step through the processes that um, Pietro just showed. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Very well done. And um, uh, Carmel is here as well, if you wanted to um, say anything. Thank you so much, um, Kira. And I think Carmel is uh, sharing the link to the Learn Path in the chat for anyone who okay. would like to learn more and follow. Um, and as I had promised uh, at the beginning of the session, um, I will now share my screen um, just to give you uh, our contact information. So as I mentioned, in honor of uh, GIS Day, um, Esri has given us five ArcGIS licenses to share uh, with um, our participants. So if you're uh, interested to go through um, the learn path or to explore uh, ArcGIS for any other projects, um, feel free, free to email us at scgstoday at unsdsn.org. Um, share a short paragraph um, as to how you're going to use the ArcGIS license for a specific project, uh, and we will uh, randomly select um, five of our participants and follow up with instructions on how you can access uh, the license. Um, so uh, again, uh, feel free to email us with any questions or a request uh, to um, uh, win the opportunity to access one of the licenses at SDGs today at unsdsn.org. Um, and feel free to follow us on any of our social media accounts. We'll be sharing the recording of this session um, uh, in the next uh, couple of days. Um, thank you all for joining us. It's lovely to see um, people joining us from all over the world. Thanks for sharing uh, um, and introducing yourselves uh, in the chat. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time uh, for a Q&A session, but as I mentioned, feel free to reach out with any follow-up questions and we'll connect you with, uh, with the different speakers. Uh, happy GIS week, happy GIS day. Um, thanks for joining us and have a lovely day. Bye, everyone.